you will be watching this on Sunday morning, but it's actually New Year's Eve. And what a better time to think about God and our relationship with God and what God might be like. Let's begin with the first chapter of John. The Word was first. The Word was present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him, nothing not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The lifelight blazed out of the darkness, and the darkness couldn't put it out. The lifelight was the real thing. Every person entering life he brings to light. He was in the world, and the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, and they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, whoever believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These, these are the God begotten, not the blood begotten, not the flesh begotten, not the sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Even a quick reading of John leaves us with two impressions or images of God. Sometimes God feels so close and at other times far and beyond us. The cosmic God, the creator of all the universe, all knowing, all seeing, in all times and all places is beyond imagining. This is the God that is unknowable the one of which we may catch a glimpse in a wild windstorm or a midnight sky, but never fully grasp. Then there is the flesh and blood God, the one that goes fishing with his friends, cries at the death of a beloved friend, gets frustrated with his mother. This is the one we more clearly understand and know. In the Gospel of John, we see Jesus at the intersection of these two realities. Jesus Christ, who can be known, he is God with us, and we share a common humanity, but he is also God with us, which means he is beyond us. In holding an image of Jesus, most of us fall to one side or the other, wanting to only consider the humanity of Jesus or only his divinity. John argues for us to hold the middle ground not always an easy position. How interesting that God becomes flesh and can be known. <laughs> but most often, we choose not to. The true light came into the world and the world told him to get lost. The world hung up on him, slammed doors on him, turned their backs on him, 
He was plotted against, betrayed, abandoned, beaten, executed. I suspect the God who inhabits our neighborhoods today gets a similar treatment. We usually behave in one of two ways. We pretend not to see God working in our world because that might cause us to re-examine what we are about. We might have to change our consumption habits or how we treat ourselves or others. It's a practice of willful ignorance or self-deception. We also have a habit of creating God in an image that maintains or elevates our position. We create a God in our churches who supports racist or homophobic or sexist practices. New images of God keep emerging in the church and world, many of them justifying the cause of the day or our particular take on things. The challenge for this year, what if we intentionally commit to open our eyes to the God who might be roaming around in our neighborhoods? Not the God we expect, but the one who is actually here. What if we decided to know that God so that we might claim, as John says, our true selves, our child of God's selves? What if we take down the walls into which we have boxed the image of God and prepare for unlikely real life encounters with the wildly unpredictable force of the universe and the one who roams our neighborhoods. Identifying those times is not always easy, which is one reason why we need each other as community. Sometimes God among us is hard to ignore. In the pre-COVID times when people attended church in person, Jim would faithfully come with his care worker. Jim has physical challenges and a very childlike approach to life. On Sundays when communion was served, Jim walks down the aisle to the front and receives the bread and juice and then takes a long meander back, saying hello to everyone that he meets with a huge smile on his face. His holy enthusiasm fills my eyes with tears and somehow I have met Jesus in the neighborhood. Another time. I hold the right leg. My son-in-law holds the left. We coach, encourage, challenge my daughter. And suddenly, new life enters the room and nestles herself on my daughter's chest. And the cosmic force of creation has done its beautiful work again. One more. Al gets up at four in the morning in souk so that he can be in downtown Victoria when the sun rises and when the need for coffee and a smoke and a conversation is at its height for folks who have slept rough overnight. The day I come along, I'm not sure if it's Al or Red with his knitting needles or the one that breaks the donut to share it with his friend who embodies that pain-filled, burdened Holy One. All encounters with Christ, Creator, Spirit, the Sacred. 
all with a force and a power that can change me. God can be known, not fully known, but known. When we seek out or happen upon these encounters, we can pretend it's just a pleasant or uncomfortable event, no doubt the safest option. Or we can claim the light of it, the light that John promises will guide us to becoming our true selves, our child of God's selves, the life light of the world. Amen.